Hello and welcome to the Turn 4 Podcast. I am your host, Dan Maldonado. If this is your first time listening, welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. Let me introduce you to my co-host, Tim Reiner. Hey, Timmy. Hello, Daniel. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm so good. I'm so I'm so good here on a Saturday afternoon. We never do this. Uh, no. you know, we're, gonna, we're recording this on a Saturday afternoon. It'll still drop at a regular time, but it's very sunny in both of our offices that face south, of course. I know. Yeah. I am cooking in my office, so it's up to 80 degrees in here. So we'll see if wow. I make it through the show. If I pass out. We know why. We know why. It was you and your heat. Lewis Hamilton the hat. It's not a Lewis Hamilton, but that's okay. So let's get on it with is it. It's a 44. We, that's right. We are not insiders. We attempt to give you a fan's perspective on IndyCar racing, usually. But tonight, we have a couple of IndyCar topics. Uh, but the focus of this episode is going to be our attempt to bring... Uh, some clarity around the classes that make up the 60th running of the Rolex 24 at Daytona. Why is it that we're talking about Daytona, Timmy? Well, there's a couple, of, well, there's a lot of reasons. One is that we are going to be there. Yes. And I'm super excited are. about that. Number Me two, too. there's a lot of IndyCar drivers that are making up this field. Yes, they are. And I think the other reason we're talking about it, there's 61 entries, which it was 60, and somehow they added another entry. And who can make, you know, sense of all these different classes. So we're going to break it down for the IndyCar <laughs> fans. So they know what, you know, all these classes mean, because I would imagine that a lot of our listeners are going to watch the Daytona uh, 24 hours of Daytona. And so we're just trying to help. That's what we're here to do, right? Help That's provide right. some insight. So yeah, we are going. It's official. I'm, we booked I can't it. Wait. I know. I can't wait. We're going to have so much fun. It's going to, it's, it's. It will make or break our partnership in this uh, in this endeavor. <laughs> I know. I don't even think we don't even have a place to stay. We're just staying at the track, like in That's a right. vehicle. If, yep. Yeah. Yep. Let's bring be bring so more. Good. And, and the other thing that we've done just recently for the listeners, we've started an Instagram account. Yes, we have. We haven't really activated it yet. I've yeah. I've made it. It's turn underscore four underscore podcast, which will be in the show Instagram. notes. Yes, it will be in the show notes. So yep. um, four spelled out, F-O-U-R for everybody out there. And um, we're going to do some, you know, stuff when we're at the track so people can see what's going on, some of the action. So uh, it's been created. We just haven't used it. But if you find us on Instagram, follow us, there'll be stuff coming yeah. in the coming weeks here. Absolutely. It'll be fun. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, but before we get on to... Uh, 24 hours of Daytona, Rolex 24, which I'm probably going to use interchangeably throughout this entire uh, podcast. We get some IndyCar news. Uh, first news, uh, Christian Lungard, who is, of course, the new arrival at uh, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing, had his rookie test this week at, uh, at Sebring. He shared the track with the Meyer Shank duo of Castro Nevis and Pagano. It's a couple of veterans. How did he do? He finished a 10th off. Pagano and about two and a half tenths up on Elio Castroneves. What does this mean? Nothing. We don't know what programs or goals for this tech session uh, were for any of those teams. So, of course, there's nothing really to derive from that. Uh, I did like his comments, however, this week um, talking about he wasn't 100% sure what he could adjust on the car which I, I find interesting, right? He comes from the Alpine Driver Academy, so a European driver. Um, I actually listened to a podcast recently with Alex Pillow, and he talks about his first IndyCar test when he tested at Mid-Ohio. And he was surprised at how much adjustment there were to the IndyCars, because coming over from Europe, it's generally, this is the best car to get around this type of track, go figure out how to drive it. Mm -hmm. So interesting. So we'll see how he does. Uh, with that one, should be uh, should be an interesting year for him. Uh, second, Robert Wickens are announced his return to racing in a Brian Herta Autosport Hyundai, racing uh, under the IMSA umbrella, but in, in the uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge. Uh, there's a number of quotes here that kind of go along with the story on this, and this is this is really a fantastic story, uh, really a fantastic story. Uh, Robert has suggested that a return to IndyCar is not likely. Yeah, I, you know, I saw that. And um, 
I think his return here with uh, this program starts the day before the 24 hours of Daytona. That's right. In a four hour endurance race. So I'm super excited that he's back in the car and will be driving and um, obviously with hand controls and all that, because he did mention that uh, he's not getting any movement back to his legs and things of that sort. So his spirits seem good, man. You know, he's been through a lot and, you know, he's got the mentality to look towards, you know, the bright side of things and, you know, that's getting back in the car and that's what he loves to do. And I'm excited to, to see how he, how he does and just him to be around the track all the time and him being back in the car is going to be awesome. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think this is wonderful. Obviously you and I being big any car fans, we were watching that races as, as he had that, that crash at Pocono and it was horrific, right? I mean, just yeah. a, a horrendous crash. Um, lucky to be alive. Um, he's worked hard. I, I, you know, we see the posts that he puts out there on social media with how hard he's working to get himself back into shape. And this is wonderful that Brian Hurd is able to put him in a car and accommodate what they need to accommodate with the hand controls, which I think is the right thing to do. Uh, and he did mention in there, I looked for it, uh, right before we, we press play here, but, um, so I didn't get out of the car in about six seconds. Did you see that too? Oh, I missed if, that part. Yeah. If he needed to, he can, he, he can extract himself from the car in about six seconds if he needed to. So that, that um, tells you that, that tells you the upper body strength, you know, yep. you know I kind of think of Alex and Artie and what his upper body strength turned yeah. into with him doing all the different, um, marathons, if you want to call it, um, the different, uh, events that he was doing. So, um, you know, kudos to him. Um, I, and I expect him to be fast. I, he was, he was always fast in any car, yeah. always fast in uh, the Formula One program that he was in at one time. So, um, yeah, well, it'll be good. I'm excited. Do you know where he's from in Canada? I, this is not, a trick question, only because not exactly. I, I, I just like saying the name of the city. It's called Guelph. <laughs> G-U-E-L-P-H, Guelph. I don't know where that is. It's between here and Toronto. <laughs> You see it. If you drive from Detroit to Toronto, you'll see Guelph. Oh, okay. There you go. That's a little fun fact. I like that. Trivia. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing like it, at IndyCar News, uh, JPM, our guy, Juan Pablo Montoya, uh, coming back to Indy with Errol McLaren uh, for an Indy 500 program. Uh, Tim, your thoughts on this? I, you're a huge JPM fan. I love it. It's so awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't say that enough. And he's got to bring a ton of knowledge, ton of knowledge, expertise, even just getting around the track, the oval, but just to the IndyCar program. So, I, you know, that was a great move by Errol McLaren. I hope they continue to do that. And this year when we're at the Indy 500, because we're going to that too. Yes, we are. I'm buying that shirt, that shirt that was there that oh, you yeah. know, I, I was going to get last year and didn't do it. This year, it's definitely because I don't know if it'll be another year that he'll be back in that seat. But I think it, he it, to for the team to first, he's got a, you know, a worldwide name. Everybody knows who Juan Pablo is. And then um, so he's bringing that exposure. And then for the team perspective and helping the engineers set those cars up, I think Errol McLaren's going to be quick at Indy. They're going to do well. And I hope to see Juan Pablo up uh, in that field, unlike last year where he was not super quick. So we'll see what happens. So do I, I like, I like the move. Uh, I like the driver, but you know, it kind of, it does beg the question a little bit, right? Would you rather see someone like Ryan Hunter Ray in that car for an Indy 500 only? Absolutely not. No, I want to see Juan Pablo Montoya in there. I don't want to see Ryan Hunter Ray in that car. If I had to choose between the two. And I think when you look at global audience and you look at just fan following, He's the right guy to have there, right? It's going to bring a lot more exposure to the 500. So I am on board with Errol McLaren. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to, you know, see Juan Pablo. And his interviews are brilliant. So I just <laughs> love his personality too, right? So uh, kind well, of a I, no nonsense, right? Attitude exactly. and just tells you what uh, is really going on. And if he's not having a good day, he's going to let you know. I am um, shocked. I guess I, I didn't ask you this question prior to, you know, hitting play here, but I, I am surprised to hear that. I agree with you 100%. I'm, I'm glad that that JPM is in that car and I, I don't long to see Ryan Hunter Ray in, in, in an Indy car. I think he had a good career and he did what he could. And 
you know, that's what that is. I guess, you know, I, I just continue to scratch my head. And the reason why I asked you the question is I was listening to really one of my favorite podcasts I like to listen to. It's Trackside with uh, Kirk Cabin and Kevin Lee. And they were talking, I mean, almost almost advocating for RHR, uh, Ryan Hunter Ray to be in an IndyCar or be on the grid this year. Um, yeah, I, you sent me a text. You made me listen too. I know, I know. They get, they get a long intro. The it was an I, infomercial. I have intro envy anyway, because ours is, you know, very low production. But um, what, why do you think he hasn't landed a ride? Um, I'm, you know, I, I, he just doesn't, in Good my answer. opinion. That's a good answer, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> my thoughts are going to be unpopular here. And your, your response to that is absolutely perfect, right? Okay. This business is about exposure. Okay. Period. End of story, right? Exposure for your personal brand, exposure for your partner brands, right? Your sponsors. Okay. And I, and, and most people who are listening to this thing, I'm going to turn this off as soon as I say this, right? Social media. Since Christmas, 1225, there hasn't been anything out of Hunter Ray's Twitter account. Nothing, right? His most recent Instagram post is a charity event that he did on December 10th. So we're looking at over a month, nothing, no exposure, nothing on podcasts, no podcast interviews, nothing. You got to sell yourself, right? Exactly. Does this matter? Don't answer that question either. Yes. The business is about exposure, and it's very quick to forget who you are. He's not promoting himself. So it makes me wonder, does he really want to come back? Maybe. I think if, if the ride was right and, and you know he was going to get paid and everything seemed pretty good with it, then maybe he would, right? But why? Why would I be in a hurry to bring him back if I had an open seat? If I were Errol McLaren or if I were Ed Carpenter Racing, who we're going to talk about here in a second. He's had past success, Indy 500 winner in 2014, eight years ago, so and series time. champ in 2012, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Since then, he hasn't won a race since Sonoma. They don't even race at Sonoma anymore. Since 2018, he's been in a well-funded, quote-unquote, air quotes, big three team uh, in IndyCar during that entire time, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now I'll let you answer. Timmy, is all this advocating... On behalf of RHR, Ryan Hunter Ray, a chance to give him a, a goodbye tour or something like that. Help me understand it. I don't know. I, 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 it's one of those puzzling pieces that uh, maybe because he's Captain America, there's that thought that he should be in the series and that, you know, he should go out on a different note than just sort of um, flying off and not having a quote unquote you know, so long, Ryan Hunter Ray, thanks for all the years in IndyCar. So, but I, it's, it's, I don't know what he brings to the series it, from, you know, just exposure. Um, obviously he has experience, but I don't know how big his following actually is. And, you know, there's some insiders that are obviously advocating for him to be in the series, but he had the opportunity with several teams uh, one being Ed Carpenter and that, that seat went elsewhere. So I just, he's probably one of those drivers that has always been paid. He's been a paid driver. He doesn't bring sponsorship and sponsorship is key. I think in filling some of these other um, teams, you know, seats and bringing a little bit of that to the program in order to help out fund the, the car. So I, I think that's where he's at. And I don't know, I, I expected him to be in some of the sports car stuff too, but he's not even, no. From my understanding, he's not in any of that either. So mm. um, hopefully it's what he wants to do. Um, but I sort of heard in some quotes and some articles that he was, you know, looking to still compete. So I, I don't know how that's going to play out. So yeah, unfortunate for him, if that's what he wants to do, he wants to be in a car full time. Um, but uh, I don't know what he brings to the series, uh, just personally speaking. So, yeah. So I, I, you know, I, I put a lot of stock into the into the personal promotion of his own brand and, and where that is. And he hasn't done that. Um, not, you know, maybe he is at at a point where he feels like I, I, you know, he's accomplished a lot. And if the right opportunity comes out, 
he'll he'll go there but at his age maybe and what he's accomplished and where he's at in his in his life with his young family and and his wife going out there and you know whacking the bushes for funding and budget and all that stuff is probably just not his bag right yeah. It's probably just not as bad. And I like that you brought up age. I always bring up age and you brought it yeah. up today. And but yeah, he's got a young family. He yeah. 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 He's got a young family. So I think it makes sense to, you know, if you've done well, right. You've worked at Andretti Autosport for a long time. You've, you've got to be in a good position. So why don't yeah. you enjoy it? You and, yeah. Yeah. So one of the seats that he did have a shot at, or we thought that he might've had a shot at was, um, the ride with Ed Carpenter that would have was traditionally the road course and street course car at Ed Carpenter racing where Ed mm -hmm. ran the, the ovals, right? Well, it was announced this week that Connor Daly will be filling that seat full time, full time being the key here where it, it said in the, in the release that Connor will be in that car full time. Ed is going to be in a third car at Indianapolis for the 500. Interesting. Good for Connor, right? Yeah. Personal brand, exposing himself, racing everywhere he can. I think he, it, he might even have been at Chili Bowl this week, but I'm not certain of that. But he's out there promoting himself and he's whacking the bushes to see what kind of budget he can come up with. And whether or not he pieced this deal together with this, this you know, Bitcoin thing, this crypto coin or not, don't know. But nonetheless, he's the one that won that. Right. So, yeah. you know, good. For, I think he hasn't had a, a full time ride in a car since 2017 when he was at Foyt, I believe. So, you know, good for him. Um, you know, I hope for good things here. Also, our friend Nathan Brown of the Indianapolis Star was uh, tweeted out that uh, this was a multi year deal. So that's awesome. And yeah. he did that with a mullet. Yeah. He's <laughs> branded himself with a mullet. Who would have ever thought, I don't think I could do that in the corporate worlds, but kudos to Connor for that. I, I don't, uh, I'm happy for him. I just wonder, so Ed's going to be in a third car at Indy and that's his only event for so far. 2022 right now. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have a ton of cars at Indy and not to get off topics, but that's going to be great. I can't wait to do the car count and put that all together and just see kind of where that yeah, I'm ready for bump day already. And I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here because we've got the Rolex 24 hours. And then we've got obviously the, the first few races of the season. And then we get to Indy. So, man, yeah. that's going to be fun. Um, Yeah, you're right. Not to get sidetracked. And I, I wouldn't expect history but, to repeat itself in this way. But remember, last year, Will Power almost didn't make that race. You're right. He almost didn't. Yeah. Pensy's got their work cut out for them. Yeah. And I'm glad we don't have this full-time teams drivers get in and they get special me treatment too. me I'm too glad that's not it's not in the spirit of, of what the indy 500 is in my opinion no not at all and uh, just one other thing just comparison from connor daly and ryan hunter ray you know you see in social media and there's like a circle of drivers that are close friends and all this good stuff and he's in that circle so he's he is. he's in the group he's i don't want to call it the cool group because that's kind of that's really childish but he's like <laughs> he's um he's he's got good camaraderie with the other drivers and, and that could help too, when you bring people into teams and you know, how teams are going to gel with each other and gel with the other drivers and even talk about setups on the side and maybe it helps in some way and somehow, but you know, I'm happy to have Connor on. I'm, full, I don't want to, which is the first time in three years, I believe. Correct. I don't want to derail the conversation because you know, we, but with all that, what you just said, why isn't Santino Ferrucci in this series? Oops. Anyhow, uh, just have, because of what I said, that's why he's not in it. <laughs> Tim, have you? Uh, it's the opposite of Connor. That's why that's he's right. not in it. Which is, which if and you bring, had Santino, a I just too. saw him do the flip at the. Chili yeah, he's Bowl. out too for the rest of the weekend with a concussion. So. Oh, is he on that? Yeah, yeah. Man, he's quick though. He is quick. You look at his. Indy 500 results and I'll bring them up at as, another time. I don't as an right owner, now. like you just to get results like that. And I don't know if it's, it's gotta be skill. It can't be just luck. Anyway, that's a topic for another day. Tim, have you heard of uh, the people ready force for good challenge? I have not. You haven't people ready is the Indy 500 sponsor for Christian Lungard. 
Uh, they're putting up a million dollars split between team and driver and that team driver, team and driver's charity of choice for any win or any team driver that wins on a road course, a street course, and an oval in 2022. I don't want to call it the triple crown because there used to be a triple crown, but that's yeah. pretty cool. So if a driver on a team puts together wins on those types, which is all three types of courses that mm -hmm. the Indy cars drive on, they're going to donate a million dollars to the charity? They're putting out a half a million to the team uh, that accomplishes that feat and a half a million to that team's uh, charity of choice, which is pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And they're also paying out $10,000 to every driver um, for a win, I suppose. I, my notes are bad. Uh, 10000 to every driver to be split between charity and um, the driver and the charity of their choice for a win. Okay. So each gets 5K. Yep. Uh, okay. That's pretty slick. So, so this is really good news. I don't know why I've not heard about it. Has it not been... In no. the publications, very has it not been publicized very good? Because this should be something I, that should be plastered it, everywhere and everybody yeah. should be talking about it. It dropped at a time where, you know, it, what could arguably be the biggest news of the week. And I'll let you take it from here. Oh, you're saying it dropped at the same time? I thought it would maybe it would drop, you know, earlier, nope. like during the holidays. And so nope. people overlooked it. It dropped at the same time that the this week Marie came out for Devlin. D Francesco. Yes. Arguably the biggest story. Arguably the biggest news of the last couple of weeks. I give up. And it is, in my opinion, it is, it's a beautiful livery, but it wasn't the livery that caught my eye. It was the sponsorship on that vehicle, which is, I think this is how you're going to pronounce it. Kamoa, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So Kamoa was founded by Freddie, Fast Freddie, right? Yep. Fast Freddie Alonso. There you go. So Fernando Alonso did that. And so I think it really, and I he's still part owner, right? I think you told me he's only 25% now, but him and his buddies, I think, started this company. Huge international following, obviously in Spain, right? And they are sponsoring Devlin. And they almost look like a prime primary sponsor, right? They've got a lot of they're a nice spot. Yeah. Yeah. They got a very nice spot. They're not the prime prime, but I think there's more to the story behind the scenes of what's happening with I know you do. Fernando Alonso. And that's why I believe it's the biggest non story of the week <laughs> that came out and nobody, nobody said anything. They were like, Oh, great. It looks like a nice livery. Um, our social media crew tweeted on that and yes, we did. got a like from Devlin, which was, yes, good we did. See. That was cool. Um, but I think there's more to the story behind the scenes with Fernando taking more interest in IndyCar and will continue to take more interest. And I think we're going to, can I say this? Sure. I think, I think we're going to see him back in a car in IndyCar in the next, you know, few years. So I think, or he'll have a presence, whether it's, you know, sponsoring a car or whether it's part ownership or getting in a car. Like I, I think there's more to this story. And so that's why I believe it's one of the biggest or the biggest, I will say it, the biggest story of the week that was not really talked about at all. And, yeah. and you're going to argue that I, I have no argument for this. You were going to say, no, I have no argument for this whatsoever. You're, you're, I'm letting no, you, but you're going to you say there's nothing going on and it's just the sponsorship. And so it's, I'm reading too far into this. Yep. I'm making it all up. So there you go, folks. No, I just no, made it all up. Your, your observation is absolutely rooted in fact. The rest of that. It was huge. I took a screenshot like and a, sent it to you because I thought I, know. I was, I was like, this is, and you're like, yeah, so. <laughs> Because your point was, and, and we must have talked about it a little bit, but you don't okay. want to talk. It, you, your point was that Devlin was sponsored by them and Indy Lights as well. In so past, it's, just yeah. a, it's just a gradual it's a move to IndyCar. It's, I, it's, I think a, it's, it's almost an identical li livery from, from Indy Lights. Oh, I don't think bigger. it means anything. It's bigger. I really heard don't. it here first. It's, I, I, it's, want you, I want you to be right so bad. I really do. Because you're so passionate about this. <laughs> it, it's it's a it's a what did i it, tell you yesterday a double decker with cheese nothing burger 
<laughs> no, for me, it was like the light switch had been off for, well, I shouldn't say this, but it's been off for a while. And then all of a sudden you see that and I'm like, well, there's stuff going on mm -hmm. that no one's talking about because it's behind the scenes. Michael Andretti is up to something with Fernando. It's going to happen. He's going to be back. He's going to, you know, have a, a Meyer Shank team that'll be part engineers with um, the Andretti team. It's all going to so. uh, we'll be see. wonderful. I don't know. I, I hope so. I, I hope so too. But think I, of this I, though. Anything, think anything. of this. Nothing. Andretti was trying to get the Formula One team. Alfa Romeo. Sauber. I know, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I think there's that close relationship with obviously with Fernando. And I think there's going to be something coming down the pipe and there'll be Mike, some news. Michael Andretti is a businessman, right? He's, he's a businessman. So he's going to make those relationships with people, right? They ran Alonzo at, at Indy. Alonzo almost won that thing before the Honda gave way. Right. Um, Michael's a businessman. Michael knows how to keep, right? People happy and give exposure and, and do what he's supposed to be doing there. And I think that's all this is. I don't think there's anything more to this at all. I really, well, don't. here's my ask. Here's my ask. If anybody okay. from Andretti auto sport is listening, which I know there's a lot of Indianapolis listeners, just drop me a line and just say, Tim, we can't talk about it right now, but mm -hmm. you're onto something. That'd be great. There you go. Off the record to me. You're, you're on. I'll, I'll keep it. You can send me a non-disclosure agreement and I'll sign it. And I will not speak about it again until you do your press release. <laughs> I swear. All right, moving on. I love it. I, dude, like I said, I I want this so bad for you. I really do. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's not. I feel it. It's not. <laughs> Are you ready to talk about Emsa? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. I think Are you so. sure? There's got to be some more IndyCar news, but there's yeah, got to be some Emsa livery here that really got you excited this past week. <laughs> no, but it's it was kind of the first. Uh, it wasn't really the first livery that was kind of exposed. I think the DHL one was first, which is really great. Um, but <laughs> Hyvie, which has is the coming too, I think. Yeah, Hyvie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think there's any. Yeah, let's go. Uh, IMSA. This is American sports car racing. Most um, listeners are familiar with the 24 Hours of Le Mans and the history of that series. IMSA is the American version of that heritage i'm definitely oversimplifying this a bit here but uh, nothing else comes close to this style of racing in the u.s for example the first race of the season is the rolex 24 which is a 24-hour race uh, taking place at the daytona international speedway uh, that uses their road course this course uses part of the oval uh, making for a unique and very fast lap over the course of the event there are five classes of race cars competing in the overall win as well as class wins. Tim, how many entries do we have this year? 61. Isn't that amazing? That's so cool. What 61 gonna cars are going to be like racing? Because when you and I've been to Indy, right, several times, you see 33 cars there to start that race, and it's busy. And then it's, it stays busy for mm -hmm. a long time. There's, what, 28 more cars on track at Daytona is what they're expecting. So that's, that's going to be a busy busy and there was a formula put together busy for day. indy and why they have 33 right there was is that right each car needs so much track space in order to race and that's why yeah there's a formula that oh, i didn't know that 33. yeah yeah it's something about 100 yards and this that and the other thing i can look it up and i love that yeah that's I why do. That's, i love that yeah. i didn't know that yeah yep. um so let's i'm gonna kind of uh, make an attempt here to run down the classes so we can understand who's going to be on track at, at Daytona. So DPI, which is known as Daytona prototype, this is the fastest of the classes and the most technologically advanced of the classes as well. So brands that are competing this year are Cadillac and Acura, which make up seven teams total, uh, two notable IndyCar names uh, in this ownership group are Meyer Shank, which are running Acuras, and uh, Chip Ganassi, which is um, fielding two Cadillac entries. As you'd expect, those teams plan to field IndyCar drivers to fill out the driver lineup. And uh, just some of the names that we certainly know best here, Bourdais, Dixon, Pillow, Alexander Rossi, Simon Pagano, and Elio Castroneves. While this is the last year for the Daytona prototype, um, it'll be replaced next year by the LMDH class. 
that program is something that we probably saw some news on this week as well, if we weren't still fawning over um, Devlin's livery and sponsorship. It was uh, that the Penske team actually had a chance to shake down their Porsche LMDH uh, entry well a year in advance. That that goes to show you how much it's going into this thing. So mm-hmm. a lot of the uh, manufacturers are committed to LMDH uh, for next year and might explain why. Uh, perhaps Daytona prototype only has two manufacturers. Well, the DPI, that's where Mazda was as well, right? And that, their last race was last season, final race. Um, of the year. Yeah, I think yeah. I think you might be right with that. Yeah. yeah. So it was the three manufacturers. It went down to two this year. And then as you know, noted, it's converting over. Um, yeah. That's, One thing, it's funny. Those are the I'm, fastest of the fastest, right? That's right. I'm glad you brought up the Mazda. So I remember when I was there, and whenever you see them on TV, I always thought the face of that Mazda. If you have just a peripheral understanding of family of brands and how how brands generally try to bring a theme throughout some of their mm-hmm. um, the characteristics of their cars, their road cars, I thought the Mazda looked like a Mazda to me. And definitely the Cadillac looks like a Cadillac when you see yeah, it does. the light configuration, both front and back. Um, I don't know that I could say that much for an Acura. I, I probably should look at it a little bit more, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe the high end one, right? Don't they have that high end Acura that's out there? That, yeah. That some people drive around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I think uh, I'm bummed that Mazda won't be out there. I've got a soft spot in my heart for the Mazda folks. So I know you do. Yeah. 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 Um, but it should be a good that that's group coming in, the DPI group with all these IndyCar drivers in it, it should be fun to watch those folks. And with 61 cars on track, they're going to be bobbing and weaving yeah, they are. for 24 hours. Bumping and so bang. I think the biggest thing is uh, keep your nose clean and um, be there in the end, right? You got to be there in the last hour to really compete. And if they the don't, world. we have garage access. So we'll be able to hopefully get some pictures of some of the cars if they have to come in for some repair and, and see what that looks like as well. So that'll be, that'll be exciting. Put up on yeah. our Instagram. Yeah, we got great access. So we're going to have some awesome photos and videos on yep. Instagram. So the next class moving along is the LMP2 or Lama Prototype 2. Um, as the tiers go, the car should technically get uh, marginally slower and slightly less technologically advanced. This class looks very similar to DPI, but are designed, built, and approved to not only race in IMSA, but in the World Endurance Challenge or Championship, which is WEC. Um, think 24 hours on Ma. That's that's these cars are approved um, and capable to run that series as well. For 20 for 2022, 10 teams make up the LMP2 um, category. All racing Orica prepared chassis with Gibson engines. Gibson engines, while you ask, is uh, Gibson technology provides a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated flat plane V8 uh, motor producing about. 560 horsepower. It's interesting to me that there are four approved chassis suppliers, but all these teams have have chosen Orica. And the first time I remember seeing Orica involved in racing, I believe was maybe somewhere along the back end and somebody can correct me, which is totally fine by me. And when Corvette got into racing in, in sports cars and when they went back to racing in sports cars. I think it was the first time I remember seeing it. Or it could have been, yeah. Anyhow, uh, notable IndyCar drivers competing in this class are Renus VK for Team Netherlands and Pato Award competing for Dragon Speed. Uh, interesting to note that many of the teams on the official entry list have driver spots still listed as TBD. Maybe our friend Ryan hunter Ray will get a, a drive in LMP2. Maybe so. I saw Max Pappas out there advocating for himself too he's like hey anybody need a driver seriously his tweet yeah his tweet. no anybody I need that. a driver i'm ready to go so um yeah you might see max pappas in a car wow i would love that that would, would be awesome that. yeah that yep. would be cool uh next next move obviously from lmp2 is lmp3 is this uh, where or- they start to look like the production vehicles not yet Almost not yet there. we're not there yet okay still pretty much look like very purpose-built um you know, race cars, race cars. Yep. yep. Uh, Lama prototype three is the next class. There are nine teams entered for this, uh, for this year in this class field is comprised of two different chassis. Uh, they are a Lige prepared chassis or, and I'm going to call it Duquesne. I, I don't, uh, 
know 100 all are powered however by vk engines which is a nissan derived 5.6 liter naturally aspirated cross plane v8 producing about 460 horsepower so stepping down about 100 horsepower from lmp2 to lmp3 and um interesting to me tim that that's a bigger engine what's the dip horsepower is that that i don't little, know don't know that one no, i didn't look it up I was taking notes. I'm over here yeah. taking notes as you're talking. Yeah. Okay. Um, some of the notable names here that are in this uh, class is Andretti Autosport with Jared Andretti and Gabby Chavez listed at two of the four drivers there. Those are the names Very that cool. are most notable. Very nice. Now we're getting into the class of car that looks similar to something that you might see on the street. Although, you know, how many of these cars with these giant wings do you see? But it's called the GTD Pro Perfect. class. These cars, to a casual observer, would, would recognize something closer to what you see on the road. Brands competing in this category are Porsche, Corvette, Mercedes, I should say Mercedes AMG, Lexus, BMW, Ferrari, Aston Martin, and Lamborghini. All features factory-supported entries and drivers. This formula is also uh, approved to compete in the World Endurance Championship. There's a couple of teams here that that we recognize, certainly, uh, one being Vassar Sullivan and Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there are a number of drivers in this class that uh, listeners would recognize, such as uh, Jordan Taylor, Felipe Nazar, uh, Jack Hawksworth, Cal Kirkwood, and Austin Sindrick. Austin's wow. a uh, NASCAR driver, but I put him in there because it's Tim's kid, right? Yeah, it has to be, right? Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. He wow. Is. How cool. I thought that was cool. Yeah. That's a good little tidbit there. So GTD Pro to GTD. This is so the where... final one. This is the fifth one, right? Yeah, this gets a little murky for me because, and I, I went straight to IMSA. So IMSA defines GTD this way. Um, I was going to write in the notes. IMSA defines GTD thusly. The GT Daytona <laughs> cars are enhanced, not defined by technology, and utilize the global FIA GT3 specification. The GTD car class consists of cars from leading manufacturers as Acura, Audi, BMW, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Lexus, McLaren, Mercedes AMG, and Porsche. This is by far the largest field with 22 entries. It looks like there are at least two of the same teams competing here that are also in GTD Pro, and that's Vassar Sullivan with their Lexus and Heart of Racing, which is uh, Aston Martin team. One team in this class I know you'll be rooting for is Magnus Racing. That's my hat, man. That's my hat. That's right. not, not Lewis Hamilton. That's, that's my right. Hat. Magnus Racing. Look for the 44 on the track, everybody. Yeah. Um. What this, this is the largest field, of course, and it, it I, I have to stop and think for a minute because I would suspect that the biggest difference is technology might be clicked down marginally from GTD Pro and little or no factory support is what I would suspect. So more of a private tier program, right? You and I hit the lottery, we're going to buy a GTD and hire somebody to drive it. Hopefully you hire me to drive it because I want to drive. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, we're getting a car and we're not going to drive it. That doesn't yeah. sound like fun, but yeah. yeah. So what's your favorite class, Dan? I'm curious. I, don't, I you, have... you know, I would tell you that it's, it's DPI because I love those cars. And I think if you look them up to, I think the Cadillac is still a V8, but I, you know, the Acura is a V6. I like the GTD Pro because they do look like cars that are that are on the on the road. We don't have it anymore, but the Ford GT was out there, and you know that was exciting to see. It it is so cool to see, and I'm using this very loosely, kind of an ordinary looking car, right? Something that you would see on the road, out there against like the DPI cars. Yeah, and I, I you know. Somebody can also send this to me too, and, and maybe we'll tweet this out. But the last time, or there has been a time in the past at, at Rolex 24 where somebody in that GT class took the overall win. Because you got to remember, 61 cars are going to be out there on, on track competing not only for 
wins within their own class, but also the overall win. And it's not number of laps like we normally see. It's time on track. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very possible that an LMP2 or an LMP3 could take the overall win. That would be cool to see. Yeah. A little bit of luck. There's a lot of people out there. A little bit of luck. Anything could happen. You don't know what weather's going to be like. Last time I was there, it drizzled all night and it was cold. And then we watched, yeah. right? We watched the, the Petit Le Mans. And there was, there was a lot of problems with cold there too. And we talked about it on the show. Yeah. 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 So, there was fires going. It was uh, fires and people camping and having yeah. fires, which the atmosphere looked awesome, but it was chilly, which had an impact on tire grip and tire wear. Um, as well as, you know, I'm sure impact on the driver staying warm and all that other good stuff that goes along with it. But I, we're going to the sunshine state. So Florida, please don't disappoint. Right. Please don't disappoint. You know, we are stuck up here in uh, Michigan, which is very, very chilly at this time of year. So I'm looking forward to spending some time down there. It's a sunny and, 18 uh, degrees as we record this podcast. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah. It's hot in my office. 88. I'm getting ready for <laughs> Yeah, It went up eight degrees since we started this. I'm, I'm getting ready for uh, Florida. So I, I know that's a lot. And I feel bad because I did shortchange some of the IndyCar news that we had. Um, and yeah, I, did. I, I shortchanged the, the Kamoa announcement too, but I guess we'll see. But we'll come back to it. Um, but right now we're, we're geared toward getting ready to go toward uh, Rolex 24 in Daytona. I'm excited to be on, on site there. I'm going to bring you everything that we can, certainly with our Instagram account, maybe a little something on, on YouTube we'll see. So make sure that you're subscribed there. If you're a regular. That's right. You've been working on YouTube live. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah Cause something. we might have something. Well, we do have something up our sleeve. We do. I shouldn't say might, we have something up our sleeve for, uh, to kick off the month of May. So I'm excited by that. And we'll probably do a YouTube live with that one. Probably nothing. I got to stop saying it that way. We're going to. Yeah, we are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Charts um, and graphs maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh it's going to be exciting. All right. I'm excited yeah. about that one. So, but of course we'll put all the links to all this in the show notes today. Um, Tim, your, your first trip to Daytona, what do you look, and by the time we record again, we'll have already been there and already done it. What are you looking forward to most? Um, well, spending some time with you. Number one, Dan is always good. So I'm looking forward that. to that. Um, I'm also looking forward to the evening racing. Like that is going to be exciting from my perspective you know, I've been to the track once and I was passing through on a vacation and I made whoever I was with at the time said, I, well, we got to stop. Let's just stop. And I went to the gate. This is a funny story. So I went to the gate <laughs> and uh, something was going on. I don't know what was going on at the track. And I, I talked to the person at the gate. I said, can you just let me in? I just want to go look at the track and I just want to stand in the stands for a second. I said, my ride's right here and I'll be on my way. And the guy looked at me and goes, yeah, feel free. So I wander out through the gate, no ticket, no nothing. I don't, I don't think there was a car on track, but they were doing something at the track. And I get in the stands and I stand just outside of turn four of the oval. Mm -hmm. That's so funny. That, turn four <laughs> that, that was not the point of my story, by the way. And I stood up there and I just, um, I just watched and, and just looked around and just took it in because I, by that time I'd been to Indy, right? Cause it's a much closer venue. And so I was just taking it in from the perspective of what does the track sort of energy do you get from the track and I, I think there is energy in tracks if you go sure. to different locations and see that stuff and I stood there for oh, I don't know right now it felt speaking about it right now it felt like I, it was two seconds because I didn't feel like I belonged but I must have been there 15 minutes just standing and looking and 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 I left so um, I'm looking forward to getting in that spot again and just taking a look at the track and seeing what's changed over time. Cause this is probably 20 plus years ago. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about the night racing and then uh, just excited to spend some time down there and uh, you know, see what it's all about. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I think we'll have a good time. I think we'll really enjoy yeah. ourselves. And, and you've been before is I have. So you can sort of be the tour guide a little yep. bit, show yep. us around. And um yeah. Lance and I loved being in the infield section there, you know, um, I, I don't know what, what turn, and I, that's, I, it's my goal to be on that infield, to see where the cars come in 
and start the infield section, yeah. there's a, a hairpin there where it's always a, a terrific example of the power, especially the power that the DPI cars put down and just take off out of there because they are just gone. And then when you see the other classes around them, it doesn't matter what it is, just how they just pull away from those other classes in yeah. that section. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm sorry, I can reference the actual turn there, but um, we'll be able to get close enough to it and, and send some shots from there and maybe do some live videos from there as well. Yeah, I, I, I've been to an IMSA event, right? We were at Middle Ohio yeah. not too long ago. So uh, I think the other thing that, as you were talking, I was thinking about other things that I'm looking forward to. I think it's just the different engine sounds, right? You don't get mm -hmm. that in a lot of racing. Um, yeah, that's true. At least here in the in the in the U.S. Um, so all the different noises, notes, whatever you want to call it, it's sometimes for people that are big race fans like you and I, some of that is like music to your ears. It's mm -hmm. almost you could listen to that instead of turning on the radio. So that that'll be fun too. And then I think the and I'm gonna one other thing is interacting with the fans. I'm I want to talk to people that are there. Me too. Just where they're from and what they're doing and how often they've been. Cause you're going to have the diehards, right. That have gone every single year for the last 40 years, 60 years. You could have somebody that's been to every event potentially yeah. there. Um, and that's always cool because at one time when I was doing some work for a, a company out on the East coast, we were going to different events um, and speaking to those that were camping out and, and why they were there and, you know, do they know about sponsorships and things of this sort? So I got to meet a ton of people. One experience that comes to mind is Talladega and working the um, campgrounds, if you want to call that, which doesn't sound good, but um, there's some great people. So if you're yeah. going and you see us, uh, stop say, us and say hello. Yeah. And uh, so we'll be looking to talk to folks too. So it'll be fun. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm super pumped to see it. And you mentioned the car sounds, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I, if you remember, I was there when I was there, I was sending videos and, and I was sending videos back to you and Billy, right? On text. Yeah. And um, for our listeners, our friend Billy, who, you know, is a lifelong friend of mine. I've known him forever. But um, sending you guys back the, the videos there and. Can we get Billy on? Sorry. We have to at some point. Right, yeah. 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 Billy. Um, we had the, the Ford, uh, GTs, just the aggressive nature of the sound of that, which was a V6, but it, you would have never known it unless you right? if just mm -hmm. to a casual fan, but the aggressive sound of the downshifts coming into the, into the, the chicane, like coming off of the oval into mm -hmm. the infield section and just the aggressive sound of that downshift. It was, it was unbelievable. And it was, there was no other car on track. It didn't matter which class. It didn't matter what it was. There was no other car on track that sounded like that. Yep. And it's just, and you're right. You sent videos of that. Curious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's you so can hear cool. It. Yeah. So cool. And, and I'm assuming the, the brake calipers and the disc are going to glow. Oh yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to see that too. Yeah. And you'll hear them too. They'll squeak. Man. Well, you know, this, I'm glad this came together that we're actually going. I was, yeah, uh, I was on the fence for a while there and I know. You know we made it happen so we'll see you down in florida yeah yeah i'm looking forward to it so hey that wraps up this episode of the turn four podcast uh we'll definitely continue to bring you content on a bi-weekly cadence but in the interim between now and our next video we will be at daytona so be sure to subscribe to our social media channels instagram which is new our twitter account our YouTube channel, subscribe there too, in case we decide to put some videos out there as well. Um, yeah. So you can get notified. And of course, uh, sub subscribe to your favorite, subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast app. And if you listen to the show, we're on, on all of them. So we're on all of them. There's not one that I don't think we're on. So if you right. find one that we're not on, let us know, we'll put it out yep. there. And regardless of how you listen, leave us a, leave us a review. If you want to send us an email or send us a, a tweet, our direct message through Twitter, our, our DMs are open. So you should absolutely feel free. We love we love getting notes and we love seeing uh, things from people. Yeah, you can go to our too. website and we've got an email address. If you want to email us. Yes, we do. Yep. If you don't want it public, we'd be happy to take your personal questions, I guess. Yeah, take whatever you got. So yeah. We'll throw it in the mailbag. 
Hey, uh, I appreciate it, Timmy. Uh, thanks for doing the uh, Saturday afternoon recording of this. It's baby girl's birthday weekend. So it's, yeah, this helps out. Hopefully a lot, so. it's a great birthday weekend. And I know um, we normally record Monday nights, but that is the day. And so you guys have right. plans. So we did it on Saturday, which it's a beautiful day. That's right. So, hey, have a great weekend to you, Tim, and your family and all the listeners out there. We appreciate you uh, greatly and look forward to catching up with you while we're at Daytona. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Appreciate it.